So, let's continue. I hope I will meet the deadline. The deadline is New Year's Eve. Here is the Winsor & Newton brush with water on it. And I'm going to continue to add the um, Payne's Grey and Raw Umber. So I'm adding a touch of water first. Now I'm going to pick up this raw umber here. And putting that in. Today is uh, third Christmas day, the 27th of December. Yesterday we had a Christmas party uh, with my family-in-law. It was very nice. My niece was uh, ill. She had the flu, but she was uh, she was there lying on the couch with a blanket. But uh, you know, it was nice that everybody was there. We were there, my husband and I, and. Uh, my sister-in-law and her husband, their two kids, my parents-in-law, and a sister of my mother-in-law. She, uh, she was there too, it was very nice. So, let's pick up some more of the raw umber. Now professional artists do this much faster than I do, but you know, because uh, of the lack of experience, I go slow and then eventually I will manage uh, to speed up things a little bit over time. And the fact that I go slow has everything to do with, um, um, I d you know, when you do watercolor painting, the paint dries a little bit lighter than when you apply it and it is wet. Now, I am not, I don't know exactly how much lighter it will be. And uh, sometimes, many times, I could apply more paint, but because I'm just not sure, I stick to adding extra layers instead of adding the right amount of paint right away. Now, a little bit of extra water. Now let's go in with the Payne's Grey, just a touch of it. It's a very, very busy uh, Christmas week, these holidays. Tonight we will be going to a uh, escape room. Maybe you have heard about that. Escape rooms, um, they lock you up and then you have to uh, go search for keys and codes and solve all kinds of puzzles. Really nice. I've done it before. And uh, you really have to do a good job to, uh, to escape from a, a room like that. So a couple of times uh, the group I was with did not manage to escape. So 
So. I will pick another brush, this one, because the hairs are a lot uh, less soft and I can work the paint a little bit better. That is what I want right now. Here. Look at that. Picking up a little bit of uh, raw umber. When this uh, painting series is done, I will go back uh, to what I was doing before starting this Christmas intermezzo because I was recording the videos for the watercolor along the seasons, the 12 paintings. And um, I hope it will be uh, finished soon. And there are two drawings from the color along for color pencil that I want to uh, do a little more work on. So it's going to be busy with coloring and painting. And then we will also uh, go on a skiing vacation, winter sports, to Austria, that is nice too. Cleaning my brush. Yeah. I will let this dry now and see how things will... Uh... They are quite... this is very dark here. Let's use that over here. Picking up more paints grey and... So I'm using this paint gray to create more depth and uh, shadow. Oh, I had to stop painting because there was somebody at the door. So let's continue now. Because I had to stop painting, this paint here has dried now, but um, with a little bit of water you can move things around. Now these, this way of painting, letting it dry and then adding water to it again and then try to make 
the paint move around it sometimes can damage your paper so be careful the comments that you are uh, placing on the on YouTube are very very helpful you've done great suggestions and uh, you know I already recorded everything so it's a little bit difficult for myself to implement all the suggestions that you do but I'm sure that I will use a great deal of your knowledge in future projects picking up a touch of Payne's Grey, just a touch to make this little leaf stand out just a touch I will have to work uh, hard to make things uh, to meet that deadline and it's not only the painting it's also the editing I'm using a, a different uh, program <laughs> I'm starting to talk Dutch to you here this is Windsor Red I believe I need a little bit of Windsor Red here I have a um, I'm using an, another editing program. I used to use the standard editing program from YouTube, but unfortunately that was discontinued. So I had to switch to another program, another app. I found one, but I always need to get used to new software it doesn't come very natural to me so but i'm so slowly starting to uh, oh man the sun is shining let me show you that is great we have had very dark days so a little bit of sunshine is uh, really nice. And now that the year is ending, I always get that urge of cleaning the house. I have that twice a year. When the new year is starting and midsummer. So I do summer cleaning and winter cleaning. And I'm definitely going to do a lot of cleaning next week. I'm really looking forward to it. And next week I won't have any students. Singing students, that's good. Because then I can uh, do stuff like that, the cleaning and, you know, sometimes you really, really I really long for a couple of days of organizing. So I'm adding a touch of water here and an extra touch of the um, Windsor Red.
and I'm going to add, let's see, Payne's Grey. Just adding a touch of that. And then maybe you experience that too. You know, you start painting or coloring, and then somewhere in the process, you suddenly feel that your hand is getting it. And it feels like at this moment, I suddenly understand. And then I take a little more risk because I feel I understand what needs to be done. Now sometimes I overreact and I ruin things, but I hope this time that won't happen. So Cleaning the brush, adding water to it, Okay, now I'm going to add the raw umber. A little more. I stopped trying to make perfect paintings because uh, at this point in my uh, painting career I am I'm just not good enough to make a perfect painting and you know perfect paintings are never perfect but as you can see I am using different styles and different techniques in one painting and that has everything to do with uh, the process of exploring and learning and trying to find the techniques that fits fit me best you know and if I would stick to one technique in each painting it would uh, slow down my learning why not try different techniques in one painting and learn about them all so that is actually what i'm doing adding a touch of water and then in a very natural way i will slowly I will slowly find my way and the techniques that fit me best. So maybe this flower 
will look different from the other ones. Or maybe they will all look different. That's fine with me. Because I'm exploring. I'm now picking up extra Windsor Red. Extra, a little more. So to, today I don't have a cup of tea with chocolate, but I have juice, vegetable juice, with all those Christmas dinners and uh, uh, all very tasty, but uh, my, actually my body was screaming, where are the vegetables? <laughs> so here they are. I'm going to do more work on this one. But first I'm going to move over to this one here. Adding water. I think adding the water first works best. But for some reason I keep uh, mixing the two techniques. That's okay. Adding water. Looking back on this year, 2000, 2017, I can say that it was um, a very good year for me. So many good things have, have happened. I feel really uh, grateful. And uh, we managed to implement uh, the habit of juicing, making vegetable and fruit juice. And um, actually it did partly what I had hoped, what I have been hoping. Let's, here is my reference uh, drawing. I need to check things sometimes. Okay. Yeah, it was very, very good, the juicing. I had a couple of health issues, I still have them. But some are gone thanks to the juicing. And uh, I'm sure next year we will continue juicing. So the last couple of days with all the dinners and the stuff, you know, there, <laughs> there was no juice. So this morning I... Uh, threw in all the vegetables that we had. So this juice that I'm drinking now, it has a pineapple, apple, carrots, that's all quite sweet. So to uh, balance things out, there is a lot of celery stalks in it. 
and um, some cabbage, a cabbage we call Chinese, Chinese cabbage. And there is also a lot of broccoli in it. Really, really uh, healthy. I cannot say it tastes that good, but really that doesn't matter to, matter to me. This is medicine. I had terrible back pains at night while uh, lying in bed. I have uh, tried several pillows, several mattresses, toppings, um, anything you can uh, think of. I've tried it. Nothing worked until I started juicing and lo and behold my back pains were gone and uh, that is quite a miracle also I had stiffness in my joints gone never came back I think many people have uh, complaints like that, stiffness, aches and pains. You don't really feel sick, it's not a sickness, but, you know. And then it turns out it's all in the food. I already knew I was allergic to um, wheat and I couldn't handle gluten. I do not have celiac disease. Uh, well, it has never been diagnosed. But I have been very, very precise lately with wheat and gluten. And uh, I feel so much better. less uh, stomach aches so that's good picking up uh, the Windsor & Newton brush to add a touch of Paints grey. Here it goes. Cleaning the brush.
extra water, little bit of extra Windsor and red, Windsor, Windsor red. I'm now checking. There's something not right here. Well. In this stage, I am uh, hoping that I will be able to pull things off here and uh, make this look like a really nice painting. So I am reminding myself of what Anna Mason says. If you fear that things are going wrong with your painting, then trust the process. Trust the process. So, I'm trusting the process. <laughs> Adding a little more water. I love painting, I have to say. I like it a lot, just like coloring. The only thing is that with the painting I had to find my way. I'm still finding my way. And with colored pencils, it seemed to be easier for me to find my way. Well, although this one looks a bit messy, it does have character, so I think I can work things out with this one. There's another one going go, uh, that needs some work, this one. So let's use uh, the Caran d'Ache. Pinceau à réservoir d'eau. Water brush. I'm adding a touch of water. Here we go. Raw umber. My husband uh, took our skis out to the uh, outdoor shop this morning to uh, have them checked for our winter sports vacation. In a couple of weeks we will uh, go to Austria. His uh, skis were fine, they are brand new. But mine needed a little uh, working work. I bought mine uh, second hand last year. I used them uh, last year for a week and they uh, they are actually they are perfect for me. I'm a very bad skier and I do not wish to spend ton, tons of money on uh, ski equipment and these were for sale in the local uh, sports shop. They were second hand and uh, I had a lot of joy with them. It was very, it was good skiing for my level. <laughs>
picking up a little more of the uh, umber. Now here it, it looks a bit... Here is a line. And I am looking at my reference picture, otherwise I would not know where to go. So I have also learned right now, here is the Windsor Red. I have learned right now that if I have a reference drawing, then when I lose the the graphite lines drawn drawn on the uh, watercolor paper if i lose them then i can find them again by looking at the reference sheet of paper so i was always a bit nervous about losing lines and not knowing where to go but with the map just looking at the other print, things go very well. So I have to keep that in mind. If I do my sketching, it would be wise for me in this stage of my painting skills to trace the drawing. So I have two drawings, one for painting and one as a reference. Picking up a little bit of uh, raw umber. It's quite dark here, so I am picking up the paint and then distributing it here. Picking up a little bit of the Windsor Red. So let's clean the brush. I need some darkness here. A little bit of raw umber here.
So let's take a step back. We are getting somewhere really nice. What happens if we would add a touch of darkness here in the background? I will add water here first, squeezing the brush so more water comes out. And um, let's start with paint gray. That looks uh, good. I will add a touch of it here. And I will slowly build that background. Thinking about the deadline of New Year's Eve, I really would like to build the background, the background very rapidly, do a fast painting, but um, that would ruin everything. I, uh, I think. Now these leaves. Let's give it a try, adding water first. As you can see, my brush is still not completely clean, but let's see. I'm picking up phthalo green light. I'm not sure if this is the right choice, so we are about to learn a lesson. Is it good or is it not good? I keep it very light, so if there is a problem with this color, I will be able to, uh, to change it by adding more layers. Now eventually I want these leaves to look a little bit darker, but first I'd like to see. I think this might work actually. Now underneath these scribbles there is a leaf also, <laughs> so I'm picking up a touch of the green, it's over here. And I'm just putting it in. And there's more here. Now this is interesting because there's already a little bit of color here in the leaves. Adding a touch of extra water. And I'm picking up 
a little bit of extra paint let's just put that here picking up extra paint from my uh, palette Yeah, I like it. It gives uh, the wreath a fresh look like that. Picking up some extra water. And then I will pick up paint. There it is, dot of paint. You can see how little paint you you need. That is something that I really, really like about um, watercolor. You you can do great things with very little paint. Very few. You can use only a couple of colors and mixing them, and then. You know a tube or a pen, a pan of paint will last for years. I'm looking at my um, reference photo again. Wow, that looks so fresh. Why not add a touch of this green in the background? Let's see what happens. That might work very well. Just to pull things together. So I'm adding water. And then, here we go. Let's see. Now this color phthalo, light phthalo, phthalo green light, that's what it's called by Sennelier. It is a mixture, mixture of pigments, so I'm not sure, well I'm quite sure there will be phthalo blue in it, but I don't know which yellow they used. But if you have a phthalo blue and a couple of different yellows, then I'm sure you can make a green that looks very similar to this phthalo green light.
I'm switching to my uh, angled brush because my angled brush has stiffer uh, hairs, harder, and they can work the paint that is on the paper, so that's better. This is really going to look, uh, wow, nice. <laughs> 